last week I had a woman in here who came in here completely gung-ho about relinquishing her citizenship. And she came in with her young daughter. By the end of, end of it, you know, there were tears rolling down her cheeks because her 10-year-old daughter is an American, but who's never lived in the United States. You know, and trying to, trying to explain, you know, what that means to be an American, it was really quite moving. But she's so emotionally tied to that, uh, that being part of her identity. Yet for tax reasons, it so completely made sense to her. Sad that she felt that she had to be in this position to relinquish her citizenship. If you have a US passport, if you have US citizenship, you taxed on all of your income worldwide, regardless of where you live, regardless of your domicile. As if wherever you're living is like the 51st state. The consensus is that there are three well, three countries that base tax purely on citizenship. The United States, Eritrea, and North Korea. Um, and this is something we, we jokingly refer to as the tax axis of evil. FACTA is, um, hmm. it's very complicated legislation. Well, FATCA is a piece of legislation that was put in place by the U.S. It's legislation that's actually aimed at banks and financial institutions. If you want to continue to do business with the U.S., then you essentially have to name names. You have to name who your American clients are. So it was a pretty easy decision, I think, for a lot of financial institutions, because if they wanted to deal with the U.S., they had to become compliant. Every bank in the world had to report their American citizens uh, to the United States, and uh, this created an enormous amount of uh, headache and uh, cost for banks. And so many European banks decided that they weren't going to have any American clients. There are a number of banks now, say in, in the UK, who are actually writing to their client base asking if they're an American because it, the onus is on the, is on the banks and financial institutions to provide this information. And if they don't provide this information, they can be heavily fined. So it's really a way that the IRS is strong-arming non-U.S. institutions into double-checking for them who the Americans are so they can match those up with tax records they have on file. And there are seven and a half million Americans living abroad. It would be the 13th biggest state. Uh, so that's bigger than Louisiana, Nebraska. We don't have anybody, particularly in Congress, who looks after our interests as Americans abroad. We don't have anybody in the, you know, in the, in the Senate. I would love to know how many people in Congress speak other languages, how many of them have passports, and how many have actually ever lived abroad. Because the way rules are written right now, Americans abroad are, are treated like second-class citizens in terms of the um, onerous uh, legislation that's, uh, that affects them. And so, you know, the, the more burdensome it gets, and the more complex it is, the more people are going to renounce. It's that simple. Individuals who give up U.S. citizenship or expatriate from the U.S. are reported in a document that Congress produces. It's called the Fed Federal Register. You can see that the number of expatriates, it's at its highest level uh, that it's ever been. So many people renouncing American citizenship, they're not doing it to avoid taxes. They're, they're paying higher taxes, whether it's in Sweden or, the United, or, or Britain. And it's, it's more to get rid of the uh, headache and the fear that they might be you know, uh, violating you know, one of the you know, hundreds of thousands of pages of the U.S. tax code. I mean, I've had clients where you know, their parents were graduate students. They were born in the United States, and then they moved back here, never completely fully understood, of course, because they didn't grow up in a U.S. household. You know, they didn't understand what it meant to be an American in terms of tax. Um, I have a deep appreciation and love for America. I grew up thinking I was American. But the truth is, I've really lived almost all my life abroad. And if America wants to make it extremely expensive and uh, difficult for me to be American, then, you know, sadly, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be British. I had to pay $2,350 for the pleasure of renouncing my U.S. citizenship. Um, and it used to be $400 a year ago. But, you know, I, I, I paid it, and there were other people renouncing as well um, yesterday. So, and the numbers have gone up, and they'll, they'll continue to go up. When you get caught between two systems, you don't get the benefit of either system. And that becomes where the problem is for Americans living abroad. You know, no one renounces that I know of, you know, uh, because they don't love America or because, you know, they're in any way um, dislike America. I think the, the great hope is that somehow Congress can fix this.